What's going on guys? Bulls and the Bears here with the weekly recap video and this week has been great. Well, for realized profits, it's been great, uh, but the stocks absolutely sucked eggs this week. So not the greatest, but we still got paid. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. A really good week actually with realized gains. You already saw from the, th the thumbnail and uh, next week's already looking pretty good too. So kind of the analogy I like to look at or compare it to is like you're, you're renting out a house or something. You have rental property, right? You buy a house and you rent it out. If the market value on the house goes down and you have an unrealized loss on the house, does it really matter if you're still getting rental income from your tenants? If you're renting it out and they're paying you each and every month, does it really matter what the market value is? If you're going to get that income every single time, it really doesn't as long as that income's guaranteed. And with the wheel strategy is never guaranteed, of course, but you know, as long as you can get that next week or that next month, whatever your cycle is, as long as you can generate premium for that period, then you're good for that period of time. You know, no matter what the stock does during that period, as long as you have that premium and that theta decay working for you every day, every week, then you're good. It's only going to matter until the next cycle comes around. If you are, you still able to sell calls the next cycle? If not, then we have an issue, but if you can, then we're good. So right now we were able to sell calls for this week, got great, great profits and next week as well. So although the stocks aren't doing the greatest, we are still looking fine. Let's get a closer look here at the account today up a hundred bucks, barely, right? Luckily, because at one point today we were down 400 down to 22,600. And, uh, I mean, that's a solid balance, but it was 24,000 like last week. So a lot of volatility has been injected in the portfolio, particularly because of snowflake. So right now it's hurting us, but I do anticipate that to benefit us, uh, in the near future, hopefully. Uh, but we did come up to end the day, but over the course of the week, you can see here down $570. We started around 23,700, hit a high of almost 24,000 again, only to come back down. So not the greatest week, but like I said, we collected premium. We have premium outstanding for next week. So right now we're okay. Here are the positions. Still got the same stuff. My SoFi, my Match, my Comcast shares. Not doing the best. SoFi in particular got dumped on this week in literally just two days. Um, it went from 740 on Wednesday after the FOMC meeting to 640. Dropped the whole dollar in, in 48 hours, which is a lot for the stock. It's about 10, 13% or something like that. Um, and then the Snowflake leap down 380. Nike leap down 45. McDonald's leap down 93. I sold puts on SoFi, so we're... we're Got something going on that, taking advantage of that drop. And then I've covered calls sold on all of my leaps, Nike, Snowflake, and McDonald's, and then Match Group as well. My shares, my 100 shares of Match, I have a covered call sold against that. So that's what we got open. These are where the positions stand, but let's take a closer look at all the charts and all the transactions I made this week and the realized gains. So we'll start with Snowflake, our uh, most recent position, the injection of volatility right here and so far it's working against us i bought this position down at the white line here this is the daily chart so it's been falling quite a bit from 170 now down to 127. Uh, i kind of was catching the falling knife you know you can cut your hand when you do that you can get lucky and catch the bottom and get a, a really good bounce catch that beginning catch the beginning of a rally but it's hard to time it like that um, overall, I feel confident where I got it. If I zoom out to the weekly, this is uh, of a great level of support going back two years from May 2022. So is now the time that it's going to crack support because I got into it? Maybe. But historically speaking, I think the odds are in our favor. It still has some room to drop while still being in the support zone. So it's not really breaking any structure yet. It's just that it's a little bit lower than where I bought into it. And it had a red week today, uh, this week, down 3%. It was worse today, but thankfully it did close green. It closed up 1%, which is somewhat encouraging because the bleeding kind of stopped. You know, maybe 
Maybe this green candle here. I threw some volume on, but maybe this green candle here is uh, is a sign of the bottom. You know, you have that lower wick at, at new lows, probably 52-week lows, that lower wick, but we push back up from it. We bounced. Buyers stepped in. If we go to the weekly look and we look at the volume, you know, you kind of have that indecision candle at the bottom of a, of a move with a lot of volume. So clearly, a lot of buyers stepped in to meet the sellers, causing a ton of volume with not a ton of movement in the, the share price this week. This is the weekly chart now. So maybe that's a sign that the bleeding's going to stop. Buyers are stepping in. Maybe they'll turn the tides. I friggin' hope so. Uh, but anyway, that's just the, some of the analysis on the stock. But what did we do? Well, if you caught my last video, you know that I did a lot. Looks like we have a visitor on the video. So here are all the transactions that I made on Snowflake for this week. There's a ton, and I made a lot of money with Snowflake in particular. And that's that's the, the nature of the volatility. You know, you collect a lot of good premiums, but you also have the chance that it drops hard on you, and that's what happened. But it started with a covered call that I opened last Friday. You know, I sold one for this Friday. I did it at the end of last week. I like to do that. I like to sell calls ahead of the weekend. That way I can kind of capture some more time value. But um, so, yeah, I sold the 137, got a lot of credit, 105 bucks, and at a pretty good strike, too, where I had like $400 of upside if I were to like get assigned on these calls. So it was a great proposition. The stock fell and I bought them back on Monday. Bought them back for 25 bucks. Sold them for 100, bought them back for 25, profited $80 on that covered call. Then the next day on Tuesday, I think this is when snow maybe had a little bit of a pop. I was able to sell another call for the same week this Friday. At 136 though, not the 137 strike, but the 136 strike. A little bit lower, but still well in profit territory. And I got $83 for it. Later that day, same exact day, after it sold off a bunch, I bought it back. So that ended up being a day trade. Sold it for $83, bought it back for $33 and profited $50. Even later that day, I sold another call. I actually sold the same exact call as, the, as I just had here. These are all the same uh, the same strike. So I sold it for 83, bought it back for 33, and then resold it for 42. So even more credit coming in. And then on Thursday, yesterday, I bought it back for $4. So this in this case, it decayed 90% and that's my rule to take it off. Sometimes I can be more aggressive than that as you saw these other transactions. These were not 90% captures, but uh, it was still a good number, profit number. In this case, it was a 90% capture of the premium from 42 down to four. So I bought it back for four bucks and profited $38. So boom, lots of profits on that. And then today I sold a call for next week for 40 bucks at the 136 strike. So the problem is Snowflake has fallen a lot. So the further down it goes, the harder it's gonna be to sell calls at that same 136 level. You can see last Friday, I sold a call for 105 heading into the new week or heading into the weekend. This time around, I'm only collecting 40 and it's at a lower strike. So unfortunately, the premiums are dropping. However, it's still yielding greater than 30% return on my investment. The investment's 4,100 bucks and collecting $40 is about 1% and I'm getting 1% in one week. So that's an annualized return of about 52% if I were to do that every single week. So it's still a great yield. It's just not the $100 anymore. So that's why I'm saying Snowflake had a bad week. It's dropped a lot, but I'm still able to get it to pay me rent, if you will. So collecting money, at least for another week. We'll see what happens next week. But that's the that's the position here. Green line is the covered call. The white line is where I bought the leap. And that's anything above the white line. The, the leap contract should be profitable. About $300 of upside on the leap plus the premium collected on the on the call. So it can move quick. I just need it to move to the upside instead of the downside. Next up, we have McDonald's. This one kind of irritating me a little bit. You know, I, I bought it down here 
Again, another leap contract. I bought it at 255 on this fall here. It, it moved lower immediately after, but then had this really nice pop up to 262. So I was collecting good premium uncovered calls. The leap contract was up like four or 500 bucks. You know, times were good up here. And then it came all the way back down. So not, not fun. Still didn't make a new low though. You know, it tried, it tried to sell off and ended up reversing closing green on the day. So that was a really nice, a really nice recovery here. You know, had that morning sell off and then, and then close to new intraday highs. That's encouraging. You have that bottom wick at the, at the peak or trough of a, of a downtrend. So maybe that could be a sign of a reversal. I'm confident in this position in the long run, got plenty of time, but I just don't like to see them. My positions have a bad time. That's all, but still at a decent spot. Um, and we had a lot of activity kind of, there's just a lot of history to cover because I had a covered call for this week. That was the product of, of two rolls. So what happened? Well, on May 30th, so a few weeks ago, I sold a 255 call for 22 bucks. And this was like expiring the next day. That's why it was very little credit because it was just a one day trade. But McDonald's really rallied um, on this next day, put this covered call under pressure and I was forced to roll it. So the very next day on May 31st, I rolled it out to the, ne to the next week up to the 257.50 strike and I got a net credit of 45 bucks. So it started at 22. And then I got a, a net credit on the roll of 45. So now we're at $67 net credit. That next week, McDonald's rallied even more. And this new covered call was being pressured. The 257.50 was being pressured. So I rolled it again out to the next week up to the 260 strike. Now we're talking about, you know, out to this week, uh, this Friday. And I got another net credit of 42. So now we have a total of $109 in the net credit because I've rolled it twice heading into this week. Well, McDonald's sold off and I eventually bought that call back for eight bucks. So a net credit of 109, which is the original 22 cents plus the 45 on the first roll plus the 42 on the second roll. And then I bought it back for eight bucks. So it ended up being a profit of $101. And then today with McDonald's, no, I'm sorry, this was yesterday, Thursday, I decided to sell another call for next week at the 260 strike again. So we're back at 260. That's a nice elevated level where my, where I stand to gain some upside on the leap itself, plus the premium collected. I got 62 bucks for it, which is pretty good. You know, you'd hope to get more because McDonald's can pay up to like a hundred bucks you know, if, if you're, if you have some good favorable price action, but unfortunately, you know, it was down here. My leap was in the red McDonald's at 253, and I'm selling, you know, cause I sold it probably like around here on Thursday and the covered call is way up here. So, I mean, that's what $7 away. So it's pretty decently out of the money and I still got some good credit. 62 bucks really isn't that bad. It's a greater than 30% yield again on my uh, investment of, I think $4,600 on this one. So that's, that's over 50% yield. And we're happy with that. Next, we'll talk about Nike. This is my third and final leap. And man, Wednesday was not kind. Wednesday was the FOMC meeting. You know, we had inflation data. We had the Fed meet and they did not raise or cut interest rates. They kept them the same. Overall, the market, I believe had a, it had a decent day on Wednesday. Let's take a look. Wednesday, yeah, we gapped up on inflation data. Didn't really do much later that day, but we still had that nice pop in the pre-market and Nike didn't care. I mean, Nike actually did pop as well in the pre-market on Wednesday after the inflation data came out cooler than expected, but then it fell over 2%, just straight down all day. So that wasn't fun. Stayed sideways Thursday, came down a little bit more today. Now at $93.40, right about where I bought my leap about uh, two months ago now or something like that. So it's in the red. I showed you earlier. I think it's down like 43 bucks. My leap is, but I'm able to get paid from this position. It's still paying me 
because it was up at these nice levels the past couple of weeks and I was able to collect some credits. So what exactly did we do? Well, just like McDonald's, this goes back a couple weeks because it started with a May 28th covered call at the 94 strike. I got 30 bucks for it. Then Nike rallied. That covered call came under pressure and I decided to roll it out to next week and up to the 95 strike. So 95 strike from 94 previously. And I got a net credit of 32 bucks. So I went from $30 right here, added another 32 on the net credit. Now it's $62 net credit uh, at the 95 strike. The following week, Nike rallied again. So I rolled it again on June 6th. I rolled it out to the following week, which is actually this Friday and up to the 96 strike. And I got paid an extra $33 for it right here. So now the net credit is $95 over the course of three weeks. And I bought it back this week because Nike had that drop on Wednesday and the calls decayed quite a bit. I bought it back for 90% of the total premium collected, which means I bought it back for nine bucks and I profited $86 with the Nike covered calls. Then I opened another covered call. So I got another call sold off this time for next week at the 96 strike. I did this on Thursday, June 13th. And this is when Nike had a bit of a pop off of its uh, Wednesday low here. So this is Thursday, had a little bit of a green day. And on that push is when I sold the 96 strike again. You can see that here marked by the green line. I sold that at 96 and that's also right here. I got $57 credit for it. So just like McDonald's and Snowflake, you know, the stocks didn't really perform very well this week, but we got paid this week and we were able to sell calls and guarantee a payment next week. So we're good. We're getting paid right now. Now we're going to move on to match group. This one, I had a covered call sold at the 33 strike heading into this week. And I opened that on last Thursday on this massive green push here. When it went up 4% in the middle of that day is when I sold the cover call at 33. And you can see that here on June 6th, last Thursday. I sold the 33 call, got $27 for it. Now it ended up rallying even more after I opened it to the point where it was almost at the money. I mean, match got up to 32.70. I could have even, at that point, I could have sold the 34 strike, which is where my position is, 100 shares at $34. I sold the call under my cost basis like a bad boy. You know, we shouldn't do that. But I hadn't been selling calls at all on this thing for at least a month and a half. And I wanted to get something going. So I bent the rules a little bit to get some calls, call premium sold out there. Now, although it did seem a little bit threatened last Thursday, it only pulled back from there. So that call was fine. I ended up buying it back on Wednesday, the 12th, for three bucks. Sold it for 27, bought it back for three, profited $24. And then I sold the 33 call again, but for next week, 33 call, and I got 28 bucks for it. And that was yesterday on this pop right here. This morning push on, on Thursday, this Thursday is when I sold that 33 covered call right up here. And uh, it's pulled back a little bit today. But it could easily get under pressure. We still have a whole other week, obviously, before it expires. So we'll see what happens. But, I mean, that's okay. I, I want to be tested. In a way, I'm kind of teasing the stock a little bit. I'm saying, look, I'm so confident you won't rally that I'm selling my call below my cost basis. What are you going to do about it? I bet you can't hit it. You won't do it, right? I'm, I'm kind of reverse psychology, getting the stock to go up because I'm telling it that I can't. So um, that's what it's come to at this point. Comcast is next. There's no screenshots to show you because there's nothing going with this thing. It's just collapsing. It had that wonderful push up to $40 one day out of absolute nowhere, up 3%. And the market was like, oh, wait, Comcast blows. So it sold over all the way back off to lows that we haven't seen since the end of April. $37.40? What the heck? I've reduced my break even. So I have 100 shares at 40.50, but I've collected enough premium by selling call options against it that my break even is actually down here at 3886. So that's kind of encouraging. Almost recouped two dollars per share of cost, but it's still uh I'm still in the red, no matter how you look at it. So not great. Zooming out a little bit, 
you can kind of see some hopeful support around here. You know, what I, the last thing I want to see is, is this to go all the way back down to 30. Then I would start crying live here on YouTube. You know, that would enact my emergency protocol where if it drops 30% from where I bought into it, that I would double down the position, cut my cost basis in half and better my chances of, of getting out of it. If I still believe in the company, of course. So hopefully it doesn't get to that point. You know, this isn't a leap or anything. This is just 100 shares. So there's no time limit whatsoever. I can hold this as long as I need to, but I would like it to work sooner than later. In a couple of weeks, if I'm still holding it, I'll get the dividend of 31 cents. So that'll be a little bit of cash flow. But until then, there's really nothing going on here with Comcast. SoFi's next. Good golly, Miss Molly. SoFi got crushed. And out of, not really out of nowhere, but just like, a huge contrast from literally just Wednesday, two days ago. CPI came out, good numbers, the market rallied, financials really benefit from any type of um, any type of shift in rate cut probabilities, which inflation has a really big part in. Part in. Financial companies, anything involved in banking ch generally will benefit quite a bit. So, so far rallied off of that CPI report. And then it pushed even after the open, went all the way up to 740. It closed at 7 the day before and rallied all the way up to 740. So rallied as much as 6% on Wednesday. And then it came back down and then the FOMC met, Powell started talking, and the market came down a little bit, as did SoFi, finished back down around 705. And then news came out that a, um, an investment firm, a Qatar investment firm, that's Qatar with a Q, like the country. They, uh, a big investment firm, had a bunch of shares of SoFi and they sold them all. They dumped like 9 million. Or I think it was 19 million shares. I know there was a nine involved. I'm pretty sure it was 19 million shares that they dumped. They completely got out of their SoFi position, which is not a good look. Just on the surface, it's not a good look. Plus, all that selling really did a number on the stock. So that happened, I believe, on Thursday. That's where they reported the selling was done. And then today, I guess there was just follow through with that unfavorable news. It gapped down, but the market gapped down too. But then SoFi just collapsed 5%. So we went from 750 almost down to 650 in just a couple of days. 650, a level it hasn't seen since November 2023 at the bottom of that 2023 correction. Not a good look. And I have 200 shares at 725. Now, first of all, I did have a call sold on this thing. And I actually did that on Tuesday. So I kind of had a change of heart, as I mentioned in my last video, if you saw it, where like SoFi, cool company, a lot of people online love it. But I realized then that that's kind of what got me into it. But I realized SoFi is more of an investment. I still believe in it long term. I do think it's a, there's a good thesis behind it and that owning it is a good idea. But... I'm just more of a trader. I like these positions to work relatively quickly, two to four weeks. Sometimes they go longer than that, but that's kind of like my baseline where I expect. I want these positions to work. I want to be able to sell calls right away, have that rally, get out for a profit and move on to the next one. And SoFi just really isn't, it just isn't that. It's more of an investment, not a trade. So when I kind of had that epiphany, I was like, you know what, maybe it's time to get out of it. So I sold calls, aggressive calls at the $7 strike right here. They were basically at the money when I did it. So as a result, I got some good premium for it. On the 10th, I sold a $7 strike, two calls, and I got $32, a P, uh, $32 total, $16 each contract I sold two, and I got 32 bucks. And when Wednesday happened and we had this massive gap, I was like, okay. So if I gapped up like crazy, it's rallying like crazy. I guess my calls are way in the money and I'm probably going to get assigned and, and lose the position. Oh, well, I'm okay with that. But then it just, that's just not what happened. <laughs> sold a little, sold off a little bit on Wednesday at the end of the day, but then Thursday came all crashing down and that's when I was able to close the calls. So I bought them back for three cents a piece or $6 total. So that was a profit of $26. So that was actually a good aggressive trade that worked out in my favor you know i sold calls like right at the money very aggressive very high chance of getting assigned 
and losing my shares, but in return, I got a bunch of premium. And in this case, I, it actually worked out because SoFi ended up coming down. So that massive credit I got up front ended up being a pretty good profit on a stock that's only $7 a share. So it's, that was a really good return on that aggressive play. And now we're down here at 650. Now, although SoFi is not a trade, as I said, it's not really trade material, it's more of an investment. We like to manufacture wins here. We don't like to take losses, especially at this point where I'm down 75 cents a share on 200 shares. That's a $150 loss. Not about that. So I'm reverting back to my original plan where I aim to get the rest of my position at 650. Finally able to sell puts on it because the premium's paying because we're there. And that's what I did. Today, SoFi 650 puts. I sold four of them for 12 cents each collected $48 total and this would put my position if if I get assigned I'd get another 400 shares I'd have a 600 share position at an average cost of $6.75 right around here is where my cost basis would be on 600 shares if I get assigned here they're already in the money so there's a good chance but there's still a whole nother week it's pretty extended I wouldn't be surprised if we bounce next week and these puts end up expiring worthless. But I wouldn't be surprised if they get assigned too. So that's what we got going. I'm, I'm sticking to my original plan. Going to get a nice big share position of 600 shares. And at that point, we can really do some, uh, get some serious returns on it with 600 shares. You know, before with my 100, 200 share position, it just wasn't really doing much for me. So I was willing to get rid of it. But now we'll have uh, some meat on the bone for sure that we can, that we can try to, get some good premiums with and maybe generate a good return. So that's what we got going on right now. So if I still at support, this base is still holding, but we're very close to, uh, for it to break. And if it does, then maybe 550 is in the cards. And then my emergency protocol will be enabled for this position where I would look to double down around the $5 mark, cut my cost basis in half and have a 1200 share position. But again, hopefully that doesn't happen. The absolute last thing on the week was Riot. I've been selling puts on this thing here and there as it dips. And every time they've expired worthless or I was able to buy them back for pennies. And this week I sold the 850 because Riot had a really big drop on Tuesday. Right here. Got down to $9.07. So I sold the 850 put for $8. So right here on June 11th, sold the 850 put, got $8 for it. And then it rallied after that. It rallied that day and then it rallied the next couple days after that. But it was actually the same day that I bought it back. So right here, June 11th, again, bought it back for $2, profited $6. Again, $6 is not a lot, but $6 on an $850 investment made in one day, literally the same exact day, so you could even say made in three hours is a huge return because if I get, if I can get $6 every single day, we'll do a more accurate calculation, $6 a day times five days a week times 52 weeks in a year, $1,500 over the course of a year. Like that's the, that's the pace, $6 a day, which would be, whoops, a 183% return. So $6 in one day, a very small dollar amount, but it was 150% yield on the investment. And that's what we that's what we care about. We want to make sure that when we deploy our money in the market and put it at risk, that we generate a really good yield on it. That's all that matters. Generally, those dollar amounts go hand in hand with a great yield, but when the investment is so small, an $8.50 price, um, sometimes the dollar amounts are small too. But I was happy with that. And that is the last profit on the week. So that does it for the weekly recap. That's a total of $411 profited this week on mostly covered calls. All of it, all of them were covered calls except for that riot cash secured put, which was $6. So over 400 bucks in covered call premium finally collected this week. And next week, you know, I have a call sold on McDonald's, on Match, on Nike, on Snow, and I have SoFi puts. So even for next week, I have $235 sold in premium that I stand to collect. 
I might not get all of it because I might close some of it early. So I might pay, give a little bit back to close it or I might roll them. So there's no guarantee I'll realize all of it next week, but that's the total potential and generally we come close to it. So that's very good. June's looking good so far. And here's the wheel graphic too. I sometimes forget to show this, but here's where we stand year to date. I mean, realize gains. So the market value is influencing the current Robinhood number right here. There's a lot of unrealized losses dragging that down. But I like to track everything that's closed and finalized, the realized gains and losses. And right now, realized profits year to date, 4,298, about 4,300. So we've crossed that $4,000 mark. That's phenomenal. Of the $4,300, 1,400 has been from put premium, selling puts. Um, 1,700 comes from call premium. About a thousand comes from stock profits, $43 from dividends and a hundred dollars in cash or interest on cash for a total of $497 total in June. And we're only halfway through because of my SoFi puts that I sold. I actually have like no cash left now, $168 in buying power, which is all cash. So yeah, no more dry powder unless these puts expire worthless and I get the money back. So uh, yeah, the account is fully deployed. Is this a bad thing or a good thing? I guess it stands to, to be seen. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.